Well, what do I win everyone? Today with me, I have Clarissa, and you guys figure that one out. Clarissa and Win, you guys figure out the unique name club. But I'm going to let Clarissa take off and explain more about what she does. And we're just going to have a natural conversation like we always do. And so welcome, Clarissa. Could you please explain to my fan base more about what you do? Well, thank you, Wynn. It's such a pleasure to be here. And yes, I hear you about the names and the all the unique names. So I help women overcome money struggles and gain financial peace. And I do this with a biblical perspective so that they can handle money with confidence, they can take care of their family's needs, and they can make an impact in their community. And I've been doing this for about five years, and I just love seeing the transformation that women come to me just like I was, and I'll explain it in a little bit, all scared and stressed out about money. And after working with me, they have confidence with handling money, and it changes them, and it also changes their whole entire family. So I'm just thrilled about that transformation. That's what I love to do, and that's who I am. How cool is that? So what brought you into the financial coaching field? What brought me in, really, I, it all started at the grocery store. I was there right next to the flour, the chocolate chips, and I was struggling to hold back tears because I had just counted up my grocery cart and realized I had overspent again. I was a new bride. I was a, supporting my husband, putting him through school, and it all fell upon me. We both had debt in, that we brought in. I had my car loan. He had his student loans, his credit cards. And I just panicked about money. I felt like I was such a failure, like I should be able to get it, that I wasn't getting it, and that I was the, the common factor in it. So all things money kind of made me panic and stressed out. And I, you know, but somewhere in that, I had a small dream. The dream of seeing my husband graduate completely debt free. Now I had no idea how we were going to do this. And so I stumbled along the best I could. And then a couple years later, I looked up and I realized if we could come up with a couple hundred dollars by the end of today, we could be debt free. So I had my husband come in. I had him submit the payment because it was his student loan. And when, as I watched those numbers drop to zero that day on March 17, 2010, I didn't realize what a life-changing moment that would be. Mm -hmm. Even though I still hated money at this point, there was peace because we didn't have any debt. And so that led me into diving deep into figuring out how to manage my money. And along the way, friends and family were like, Carissa, how are you? paying off the debt. How are you paying cash? I ended up saving up $79,775 to pay cash for the rest of my husband's education over the next few years. So they were asking me all of this. And then I'm like, well, so I shared with what I learned that was helping me and it was helping them. And it was at that point, I dedicated my life to helping other women who are where I was scared and stressed out about money helping them to have confidence, helping them to simplify money so that they can just, their finances can completely change. How cool is that? How cool is that? Now, can we say what your husband is going back to school for? Uh, he, he went to school and he finished. He's a software engineer. Software engineer. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Are you an engineer? <laughs> no, I'm a journalist. Okay. By speed, but I'm actually going back to school. And I have the blessing of a program that I'm working with. Even though I still have one student loan to pay off of in April of 2022. I have a blessing right now of a program that I'm working with to um, their pain for my school completely. Oh, wonderful. And, and I also have the blessing of a financial advisor who's helping me. So we're getting 
I'm getting back and talk to you guys because I, and I'll admit this, I, up until this year, I was terrible with money. Mm-hmm. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> and Carissa knows it too because I think most women are bad with money. I don't know what it is. I have cerebral palsy, so I have all the excuses in the world <laughs> to be terrible with money. But I don't know what it is, but math is not my strong point and money is not my strong point. I'll admit that publicly day in, day out. I'll but just- here's the thing though, Wynn. Oh, you were right, none of us were born with it, with the skill to manage money. But it's a skill that all of us can learn and we can improve. Yeah. And what I have found with women, especially you brought up, why are women so bad? Is most women that I work with never had a simple plan to follow. And that's all it takes. We beat ourselves up. We think we're the worst person that no one else struggles with it. But it really, it is that you never had a simple plan to follow. And you probably didn't have good role models around you teaching you how to handle money. So it, it's not your fault. And But this is something that we can all take control of. And we don't have to let chance or circumstances or uh, disabilities or illnesses or any anything, debt, you know, student loans, anything. We don't have to let what it is now dictate what our finances look like in the future. We all have a choice. Exactly. And I am lucky to be working with a person to help me with mine and get me organized. And yes, so that is that. And I'm super blessed to have what I have. And I am super blessed to have this program that I'm working with actually pay for my schooling so I don't go into more student loan debt and then once I once I get out of there I'll be able to pay my student loan debt and I'm working on it. I'm slowly making myself financially independent but I hit rock bottom mm-hmm. and now I'm working my way out. Well that happens to all of us and I'm so thrilled one that you have the program paying for your school that is such a huge thing. But yeah. then also that you're taking control of your finances and you're making choices to make them better and yeah. to improve them and have a have a better financial life in the future. That just makes me so excited. Yeah. <laughs> I, seriously, you just made my whole day saying that. So, ah, Well, good. And so if you had a favorite book, what would it be? You know, I would have to say my favorite book right now is a couple, two books. It's um, A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23. You can give us two. Okay, thank you. They're by the same author and they kind of go together. So A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23 and A Shepherd Looks at the Good Shepherd. And they're both by Philip Keller. And I've read them this last spring and they have changed my life just on how much God cares for us and takes care of us and goes before us to provide and to make our paths so that we can just really thrive. And they have made such an impact on me. So those are the two books that I would I would throw out as my favorite right now. So Philip Kellogg's books go after you guys go after you guys listen to this podcast. Go scoot to Amazon and look up Philip Keller and go, go <laughs> read, go read because I'll go listen to it on audio. We don't care, but as long as you pick up Carissa's favorite books, you'll be as good as gold. And so I come a win in or any of my books into that card, mind you, with that book and so i will be happy if you guys do and then um if your best friend had to write a book about you what would the title be hmm i would have to say a trophy of god's grace 
a trophy of God's grace. Mm -hmm. And why? I have just seen God's grace come into my life and just bless me in so many ways. And I wouldn't be who I am without his grace. And so that would be, uh, it's also a testament. You know, my life is a testament to what he has done and how he has changed me. And so I would want to give the glory to him. Well, isn't that interesting? And what is your morning routine? My morning routine is I wake up about 5.30 to 6. I go outside, I make my hot lemon water, and I read my Bible outside in my garden and watch the sunrise and watch the birds. And then I come in, um, I'll go run usually around the park, and then I come back and make breakfast and get ready for the day and get, get to work. So, yeah, a morning rides like I am. Yes. I'm usually up at 5.30. Join, I join a Bible study, believe it or not, in the um, last couple months. And I will continue that. And so, God's grace, God put me on this planet to share my wisdom with you guys and so I have we have to be thankful that we still have our faith yes and if I don't have that in my morning <laughs> my whole day kind of no. doesn't go right exactly and so um do you have questions for me Oh, well, I do have a couple of questions and I also have a couple of tips that have helped me uh, overcome money struggles and have confidence that I'd like to share. Is that? Yeah, that's fine. So I have three tips and I'll go through them quickly, but the three tips that really helped me, because I used to hate money. I told you that I hated money. Money was stressful. But when I learned that there is the, the power of being intentional with your money, such as having a budget, but not a budget like your normal thing about, you know, it's all stressful and you have to say no to everything, but a budget where you list all of your expenses in order of priority and you put four things at the top, uh, food, lights and water, housing and transportation. Because when you have those four things at the top of your budget, you have enough money to pay for all of them. And when you do, your family's needs are taken care of. And so there's a ton of stress that melts away because you know your family's needs are taken care of. Then the second thing is money doesn't have to be stressful or complicated. We all make it complicated. It's all this like bad emotions and all these negative things, but it really doesn't have to be. Money stress comes from not having a plan of where your money's going not being in control of it, and also not making progress on paying down that debt or saving up that money. And when you feel stuck, that's what causes money stress. But having an intentional plan for your money, deciding to take the steps to take control of it, and just to really pay down the debt. You, I can't tell you when how much being debt-free has totally change my life. And so that's something that I really encourage people to do, but it all comes from just being intentional with it and having a simple plan. The third tip. Oh, go ahead. And I was going to say, um, two, because I don't know if you guys heard the podcast that came out this morning on my feed, but I made a huge announcement and this has to do with my tip about money okay get rid of the big giant house if you can get rid of the big giant house that will be happy that will make you happy if you can move and downsize and that's what i'm doing you guys i am actually going to look at a condo we'll be calling this on september 1 
And which is a Tuesday on September 2nd, I'm going to look at the condo. And I am getting with this big giant house. Mm -hmm. And so that is totally cool. So if you can get rid of that and just move to a smaller house, that will decrease your debt. Yes. Well, I mean, you bring up a really good point when too many people buy too much house. Yeah. And they don't have the funds. They don't have an emergency fund in place. They have lots of other debt. And so it's just more than they can handle. And it's more stress. Now, if you can, if your finances are in order and you have the money, then buy the house if you want. Yeah. But I don't want the house to have you. I want you to be in control of your finances and enjoy your house instead of having too much house, having lots of debt, no savings. And then the water heater goes out and yep. uh, now yeah. you're stuck. <laughs> exactly. Nope. So, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm giving up the big giant house for a small cute condo. Yep. And I'm, I'm super happy about it because right now my house has me. Mm-hmm. And that has just feels me. like a chokehold, doesn't it? <laughs> chokehold and i'm like okay and they um people ask me when this first was presented to me they said uh, they showed me the numbers and uh, let's just put it that way that the numbers weren't very pretty and um and they said well what do you want to do do you want to do x y and z or do X, Y, and Z point two, and uh, do you just want to get rid of the big giant house completely? I said with tears in my eyes, I want to get rid of the big giant house. Mm-hmm. And everyone has been supportive, but also shocked because they um, thought that I was going to stay in this house for the rest of my life. Uh-huh. And so I'm like, no, no, I want to live life again. Uh-huh. I want to have more money to and not have my house be a chokehold uh-huh. for me and my stepmom. And yeah. And having that financial peace, and that's what I do with teaching women about how to handle their finances as I simplify it, give them a simple plan to follow, but having that financial margin, that peace of mind, when it comes from you being in control of your finances and you making progress towards the goals that you really want to see come forth in your life, that financial peace is worth so much. I mentioned that I became debt free in 2010. I haven't gone back into debt since because for me, that peace of mind that came from being debt free was worth more than anything I would want to buy and go back into debt for. So it really does give you a much better quality of life. Your finances really do affect every area of your life. If you haven't realized you Uh, It does. (laughs) And it affects your relationships. And if you're stressed out about money, you and your family are, they know it too. You know, they can feel that stress and that tension. But when your finances are in control, when you have an intentional plan for your money, when you know what you're doing with your finances and you're making progress on it, that leads right into my third point. God has given each of us a gift And he wants us to share it. But too often money struggles hold us back. And we're not able to do that because we're worried about paying the lights and making sure there's enough money for food and paying the mortgage or the rent payment, whatever it is, that we can't even breathe ourselves, much less look towards other people. But when you get control of your finances, you and you're taking care of your family's needs like I mentioned having your family's needs taken care of first with your budget now you can breathe and now you have the mental and emotional ability to look beyond your family because taking care of your family I want to stress this is such a huge gift 
and an honor and a privilege that you can do. And it's amazing, but you can also share your gifts, whether it's financial or it's just the gift of you with those around you when you're not stressed out about money. So that's my third point. Yes. Uh, they really helped me change from being stressed out about money to being confident and having peace of mind. Yeah, exactly. And we're going to do this with grace and style and god's grace and style and i'll um i'll give you a update on my small health crisis um i'm not calling it crisis i'm calling it a small health setback although with the information i got handed yesterday and with god's grace i got handed medication and I already feel better but sure. now we have to see what the root cause of the problem is and if it's what I think it is we're on the right track but if it's my second guess we are just going to handle it with God's grace <laughs> and That's all we can do right <laughs> all we can do and if yeah but if i'm i'm pretty much thinking it's it's number one i'm pretty much thinking this health crisis is number one mm -hmm. and so i'll let you guys know i'll let you guys know what this health crisis is and so i would appreciate your prayers and love and support and we're going to pull this off with grace and style and let's do it. And so Carissa, do you have any questions for me? Uh, yes, I do. And then I have a gift for your audience. Oh, my you were so nice to my audience. <laughs> so my question to you, Wynn, is if you had a million dollars, would you, what would you do with it? Would you, and if you, are you saying I want to give, like where would you give it to? If I had a million dollars, I well, if I had a million dollars, I would give half of it to uh educational foundation and then because that was my own profession, and I know that teachers are struggling right mm -hmm. now not only with their own finances but the struggle buses will with all the teachers in the education mm -hmm. field and so um i would give half of it to uh, education foundation to especially help teachers in charter schools and title one schools which for those of you who've ever worked in a Title I school, you know that that's a disaster and a half. And I'm realizing that charter schools, even though they're better, they're still not as great as private schools just because of private schools have money to support and just teachers just get paid low in general so i would give half of it to a educational foundation um to support the charter schools and to support the um title one schools and then i would give the other half to a nonprofit that i'm involved with called the Bridging Bionics Foundation, and they have a exoskeleton robotic suit, which um, is, well, we got a new one, but it's not cheap to get um, these exoskeleton robotic suits. And so I would give half of my million dollars to this foundation so that 
they can get another exoskeleton suit, particularly a pediatric one, because we're, we all, and I say we all because I'm one of the founding members of this foundation, we are seeing young kids with neurological disabilities. Mm -hmm. And right now the exoskeleton barely fits me mm -hmm. because I'm short and mm -hmm. barely fits me. But um, that's what I want to do. I want to give it back to the education field and I want to give back to science and technology. That's amazing. I love that. And I, that's one thing with whenever, whoever you are, as you take control of your finances, you really can have the margin to be able to give to causes that you really care about. But uh, the free gift that I have is a budget worksheet that kind of walks through the budget method, the prioritized budget that I taught on. And you can get that at changeyourfinances.com slash ask when for the this show for this audience. Yeah. But, yep. Ask when people. All one word, by the way. Yes. All ask one word. When. A S K W I N. If you guys haven't figured it out by now. So if you're wanting to have a simple plan of action, if you're wanting to start to take control of your finances, grabbing this worksheet is the best step to take next. And I also want to let you know that if you do have a question about money or handling finances and you want to reach out to someone, you can do that by email or by Instagram or Facebook and send me a direct message because I really do care about you and your money. And I want to help you get control of your money and have a simple plan to follow. Because I know once you do, like the effects will be every area of your life. And so I really want to help you with that. So don't be shy. You know, don't go grab that worksheet. And then yes, people, don't be shy. Especially, and this is my last tip, especially if you lost your job due to COVID, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Reach out to Miss Carissa and let's get you people back on track mm -hmm. and let's get me back on track and let's get everyone else back on track because this is going to be, this COVID situation is going to stick around for the time being and we need to get everyone stable and secure and we need to get everyone stable and secure so mm -hmm. please don't hesitate to reach out to me about mindset stuff and positive attitude stuff and please don't hesitate to reach out to Clarissa about the financial end of it because mm -hmm. once you get the financial end of it, then you can focus on the mindset end of it, or you can focus on both together mm -hmm. and we can do magic. Chris and I, I'm just more focused on the mindset end of it, but let's get you people stable because I am, I am watching you guys from the sidelines saying, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Well, if you have that emergency fund, you can do that and then go for your passion. Mm -hmm. And let's face it. If it's not COVID, something else is going to come up. <laughs> if it's not COVID related, something else is going to pop up. Mm -hmm. So I will, yeah, reach out, reach out, reach out, please. And let's just make this world a happier and safer place, you guys. Thanks. See you guys. Bye, you guys.